You know, I should probably make a command for that questionnaire. Hold on, let me do that real quick. Because some people are going to be like, what are you talking about? Custom. Add command. Uh, this. Grab that. And dump that in there. Does that work? Hey, there it is. Oh, that, no, that doesn't work. Hold on. That looks terrible. Next. Where'd it go? You. Edit. Edit. Right, now let's see if that works. Hey, there we go. Okay, that looks much better. Now there's a space in there. Have I thought about trying out Starship Troopers game? Wouldn't that have been like 1998 or something? When did that movie come out? The game would have been around then. I would think. It's new. Oh, is there a new game? Yeah, oh! I have not heard about it. Hey, Baka. I posted those questionnaires I was talking about in Discord. I don't know if you saw that or not. All right, let's enter the technically hideout and deal with this, shall we? Oh, it's a cave. Oh, and it's not very big. Will this ever end? You saw you just opened them? Okay. 16 player co-op where you defend the base. They're coming, guards, everyone here. Oh, there's a fucking bard. Ekun. Let's see, we got... An archer, a fighter, a rogue, a cobbler, <laughs> and the bard. I think we should drop the bard first. I grant you dead. Okay, he looks like possibly a cleric, perhaps. Okay, Octavia. I really need to redo. Wait, why do you not have any spells? Have I not done your spell book? Oh my lord. <sighs> okay, mistakes were made there, but that's okay. We'll live. <sighs> okay. I think we'll just start. What are you, Archer? Consider me provoked. Is that it? Yeah! Uh, Valerie. Who is this? Oh, that's the Archer I just hit. Dog. Dog can't get around. Okay, delay until here. Or Gongar. Touch melee attack. Okay. I am going to rage. Okay, she t she chose not to attack me. Interesting. Now, now, dog. 
can get. Dog still can't. Ekun is in the way, and Tristian. Alright, can you delay again until after Tristian, perhaps? Alright, Tristian. Move over here. Now, dog? Hey, now, dog. Alright, Ekun. Cannot hide from me. Archer down. Oh, he's an alchemist. Okay. Back there. Out of my way. I'm using the wrong club there. Awesome. A cleric and a fighter. Let's hit the rogue. Stab my dog. Okay, hold on. Oh. I was like, well, who messaged me in Discord? It was too tough. <laughs> All the questionnaires is done. You're going to go do, you're going to go scavenge. Okay, cool. Thank you for filling that out. I very much appreciate it. Like, not even, like, no bullshit. It's very helpful for me. This is for you! Gongar, come over here. Ekin. There's a fighter back there. Uh, let's take out the cleric. Let us strike at one. Christian, walk over there. There's another bard back there. I'll fight if I have to. Okay. 
Dog, stay there, Valerie. Christian. Not bad. All right, Octavia, come over here. Alright, so that wasn't a great idea. Um, It's his next hit, not the next round. Interesting. I didn't know that. Maestro Janush. Uh, he claps his hands and greets you with a smile. So you've managed to track down my messenger, locate this place, and make your way here. Impressive. Very impressive. I see that all that training was not in vain. You old scumbag playing your games. You think we don't know it's a trap? Ha! <laughs> We're ready for anything. Oh, of course it's a trap. Oh, of course it's a trap. Not for you, though, my darling. Octavia Ragongar, you've surpassed all my expectations. I can't help but feel pride in such students. I speak to you now not as slaves, no, but you are deserving of your freedom. You've proven I can speak to you as equals. I invite you to become proper members of the Technic League. You will become my left and right hands. You can have all the things this shabby baron could never offer you. Money, slaves, power, access to secret knowledge and powerful artifacts. We require just one small entry fee. He points at me. His head. Ekun uh, narrows his eyes. Oh, it moved me all into this room. Interesting. Uh, he watches Ragongar closely, preparing to strike it, uh, a blow. Valerie's eyes turn icy. She puts her hand on her weapon, looking at Octavia and Ragongar silently, waiting for their answer. Whoa, that is one thing I wasn't ready for. But listen up, you old piece of shit. Do you take us for brainless idiots? We think uh, You think we've gone through all of this training and didn't learn the most important lessons? Lesson one, never trust Maestro Janash in anything. Lesson two, hate Maestro Janash with all of your heart. Enough talk, old teacher. We're here for to pass our final exam. All right, so he's trapped us in here with him. No big deal. I aim to. Do not falter. Normally I would have haste, but I don't have it right now, so... Destroyed. All right, let's do this. Go 
We'll catch him. We just need to get these poor people free first. No, we we don't. Forget them. Can't you get the? You can't. Can't you see the scums getting away? Reg, we can't leave them. We used to be slaves too, and we freed ourselves. We owe these people nothing. Wake up! Living people are burning right in front of you. How can you let them? These people need our help. Ah, damn it! Fine. Uh, let's let him roll himself back to Numeria. Calistria is not blind. He'll get his someday. Oh. Hey, stop. Damn that scum. He's gone. It's alright. We'll settle the score later. No, we won't. It's over. We'll never see him again. He knows we're stronger now. He won't risk crossing us again. That's wonderful. Don't you realize what he said? He is afraid of us now. The great ma maestro Janus just ran away from us with his tail between his legs. He's running back to the farthest corner of Numeria to sit and hide for the rest of his life. Afraid we'll come after him. He's annoyed. <laughs> I guess you're right. That piece of shit's gonna sit, gonna see us in his nightmares for the rest of his life. Of course, I can't pick any locks. Annoying. His diary... A wand of echolocation, okay. Well, well, what do we have here? Reg, take a look at this. His key. Found something interesting. Maester was in such a hurry, he left this here. Pretty interesting. What'd you find? These are Maestro's ledgers. All his accountings for the last, let's see, 10, 20, yeah, for the last 30 years. Don't you know what this means? Somewhere in these pages is me and Octavia when we were bought, how much, from where, and even from whom. I'm not all that interested in my tribe, really. Uh, I already know who they are, piles of shit sell children into slavery. But it might be interesting to pay them a visit, maybe split their faces personally. It'll take some time to make sense of the ledger. We may not find anything, or we may find something and regret ever looking. But I want to know the truth. I want to understand who I am and where I came from. Well, I got the key. Was that not... I guess it wasn't to the chest. Maybe I can come back with, uh... Ah! Entertainment! Nyaaah! <laughs> Ow, rude.
Hey, that's a scimitar. Isn't that what you use? He uses long swords. Chocolate ice cream recipe. Hell yeah. Stretch me muscles. Four shields, I'll take them. Hmm. The debate. Curse has still got 131 days. This is all Vorticai stuff. Alright, we need to go do the debate, which is with Jubilist. Okay. So let's go back to the capital. When we do the uh, Vorticai tomb, I'll try to swing back by towards there. Because I should have um, Knock Knock with me. See if we can unlock that. Alright, what are we looking at here? Ekun Transmuter, huh? I'll take out the transmuter. Ah! I'm gonna run up here. Wow, nice. Sick. <laughs> the dog succeeded on the saving throw. It bit. Octavia, shoot him. Or not. Excellent. Repent. Ow. Ow. His spell failed. All right. graphic settings on actually oh they're all on high okay 
For some reason, I came into this room and I went, wow, everything looks so much better here for some reason. Uh, I'll just take all of that. That's fine. We're going back to town. We'll just sell when we get there. It's no big deal. sell all that we'll sell all the will you stop doing that sell all the daggers great sword one scimitar two i don't need that don't need those drop off some wands Alright. Everything else looks pretty good. this stuff can be turned in yet. No, okay. Let's... Four of those. Four of those. Don't hit collect all. Follow me or don't. Hey, okay. let's check how things are going. All right, I did that. Military outrage. Some soldiers on leave have been bullying the peasants. 31% chance for success. Man, this is getting harder. I need to start leveling up some people, I guess. Let's leave. Uh, yeah, straight up, just leave. All right, you guys sit down. Jubilist and Knock Knock are back. I think that's correct. That seems right. Actually, let's do this real fast. Hold on a second. Let me look.
I don't think you're right. But I'm going to look. Uh No, it's 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 listed as evocation. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't pick the name from D&D &D 1E because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, oh, I remember what I was going to do. Her. <laughs> Spellbook. All right, uh, obsidian flow goes there, I guess. And then we'll do acid pit, controlled fireball, and ice storm is essentially fireball, but ice. Okay. So I'm gonna do haste, sea invisibility, lightning bolt, and then an additional haste and a slow. Molten Orb. Do that. First level. What? Uh... Put a couple of magic missiles in there. Magic missile's always good. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, essentially, like, I looked it up, and I was trying to, like, scroll through shit as fast as possible, because they're like, here's how to beat Vorticai's tomb, here's all the treasure in the tomb, and I'm like, I don't want to know that. So I'm, like, scrolling past all this really quick, and then I found something that was basically just like, uh, I finished Vorticai's tomb, and then I went back to the capital, and it said I had failed all these other missions, and they're like, yeah. Essentially, you beat Vorticai's tomb, and you get back to the capital, and as soon as you get to the capital, chapter's over. Doesn't matter if you like beeline straight there and finish the whole the whole Vorticai quest line in like a week, or if it took you like 90 days. That's the end of the chapter. And so they're like, just do all the in chapter required missions first. And I was like, oh, okay, well that's easy. This is the last one I've got. As far as I'm aware. Uh, I get the feeling I come at it from this side, but let's, let's go here. Wait a second. Can I claim land regions? Claim Silver Step 375. Where is Silver Step? Oh, that's this. Actually, that might be nice, because that is... That's all of this area I haven't been to yet.
Like, all these unvisited locations, I'm gonna have to be navigating through there. Interesting. Alright. Maybe we'll look into that when we get back to the capital. Hey, I was right. You need the following to enter here, Lindsay. Oh, I thought it was Jubilist. Oh. Because it says Jubilist on the thing, doesn't it? To help Jubilist find out why the gnomes left the first world. I guess I also have to take Lindsay. So I guess I'll, say I'll put Knock Knock back. And bring Lindsay then. Time to get some rest, isn't it? Yep. Mendev Crusaders. DC 27. Jesus. 16% chance success. Wah. Undead Cyclops attack. I still haven't dealt with that? I thought I had I thought I sent somebody on that. Undead Cy yeah, him. I really got to level up some gr some things so that these people can be better at their jobs. Yikes, dude. I think my I think my my like kingdom advisor levels are just drastically underleveled. How much longer, I wonder? I think I'm way under level on that stuff. Does Lindsay ha Lindsay has spells, right? Oh, but hers are just available. Okay. Put her there. So we take Lindsay and Jubilist. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it.
Okay. All right. Whoa. Zerd Zottenwopple. Okay. A very pale gnome with dull, brittle ha hair is scribbling something busily on a scroll, not looking up as you approach. Ah, here you are at last. Go read the rules quickly. They're posted a little further along. The other teams already arrived a while ago. The host said we'll start as soon as you show up and read the rules. Oh, of course. I'm famous enough for my admirers to follow my every move, but still, I'd like to know how did it... How did you know we were coming? They shrug. The host said so. Well, are you going to keep me waiting? Read the rules and we'll start. Fixing his glasses, he looks at the paper describing the rules. Well, let's see. I'll read out loud so that everyone can hear. Rules of inconsequent debates. Year to be added later. I see the author didn't overstrain themselves. So the rules. Item one, obey the host in everything. I'll write these down. What is on this page? Uh, I don't know what that is. Just gonna throw it away. All right. One. Obey host in everything. Okay. That one's going to be a trick later, I bet. Two, come in triplets. Two. Three, no fighting, no, kill no killing each other, even temporarily. Even if you want to. Even if you apologize later. Three. No fighting. No killing. Okay. Seems simple. Obey host in everything. I think that's going to be a trick at some point, but we'll find out. Oh, item four. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> or. And the most important, the participant must assume the shape of a giant frog. Participant must be giant frog. Okay. Weird. What does that have to do with thing? Alright, those are the rules for the competition. What irresponsible word monger? Uh, ah! Alright, perception. Something is wrong here. It's not difficult to see the text of the last item of the rules is a little different from the others. It looks like someone just added it in, vaguely copying the style. Uh, the last rule has been added to the others. It would seem someone inserted it on purpose. That's sabotage. Turning me into a giant toad? Uh, how would that... Uh, would you please tell me, am I supposed to participate in the debates like this? I didn't carefully rehearse my image and the impressions I make on the listeners just to lose it all in a snap. And what if this spell can't be lifted? My admirers won't even recognize me. Don't be upset. You're not an ugly frog. In fact, you're rather a handsome one. No, I can't bear this. Are you saying that the last rule was written in? Some other participant must have done it to hinder their rivals. Thorgrim, we need to find this trickster and make them fix it. I'll question everybody and identify them. Don't worry about anything. Just, I'll go run to the host and ask him a few questions for my book. It'll buy you some time. You start looking for whoever is responsible. Uh. 
Greetings, I'm Sir Alfrey, loyal follower of the Tentacles of Imode. Knight, noble crusader from Mendev. Tentacles, oh yes. My knightly motto is to be courteous even in death, but I'm afraid I must now be changed to serving the tentacles of evil. In just a few phrases, he managed to pour more pomposity on us than I can manage in a week. Quite a talent. You don't often meet uh, ASMR. ASMR are not so uncommon in our tentacles. Celestials are known to aid Mendevian crusaders in our war against the demons. Sometimes this camaraderie sparks a tentacle, I mean personal attraction, but just the presence of the Holy Celestial nearby can sometimes cause the birth of an ASMR child. See, easy as tentacles. Tentacles of evil? And why is it that you want to change the motto? You see, upon my arrival, I immediately went to read the tentacles of the event, but Guile already had me in its tentacles. The rules were charmed and everyone who reads them must say tentacles every so often, which is happening to me just now. Tentacles. If I can't get rid of this affliction, at least tentacles I can make it into my motto. You try to talk to the host about this. I did in the name of tentacles, but Faye think they that cheating within the rules is tentacles perfectly appropriate. A true knight, I must overcome these tentacles resolutely. You have any idea who could have done this? It was done by one of the participants who allowed their tentacles to guide their heart, including you and me and my tentacles. Four teams of three arrived. I swear by my tentacles. My service to the most honest Imode would never allow such tentacles, nor would I suspect you or your outstanding companions, noble tentacles all. Look for the villain among the other two teams. Are you participating? I most certainly am by my tentacles. I've come here to carry out the will of my tentacles and set a good example for my tentacles, and possibly to find a new way to fight tentacles, that is, demons. If I win, the Fae might answer all my tentacles. So you're a Mendevian crusader. Truly spoken. I hope you've heard about our glorious tentacles. Our order fights demons fearlessly, preventing their tentacles from spreading across the world. I gotta get out of here, bro. Before you leave, let me ask you, and in the name of tentacles, don't consider it idle curiosity. What need brought you to the tentacle debates? That would be me. I asked the Baron for help in this tentacles... Ah! In this endeavor, because winning will let us ask what made the tentacles... Uh, what caused the gnomes to leave the first world? For me, these tentacles are something more than scientific curiosity. I'm amazed at how inquisitive the tentacles of your mind are, sir. I admit it is the first tentacles that I've ever talked to such a learned frog. Tentacles! Forgive my ignorance, but it never crossed my feeble tentacle that there are educated ones among your race. For the love of Desna, I'm not a frog. Let it be known to you, sir, that you are speaking to Jubilus Narthrobble, a well-known publicist and researcher. The shape is the consequence of a silly prank. I am a gnome, and that is why I'm participating in the debates. To learn how my race received the affliction called the bleaching, and discover a way to fight it. In that case, I wish our worthy rivals good tentacles in the name of truth, justice, and tentacles. Kobold right. right. raises his little snout. Greetings! Why do you have those Jerobas there? Faye say need three. I know three. No friendses. Wanted to go very much. Caught this jump mice. Now we are three. Participate. Are you participating in the debates too? Yes, participate. I participate. Amazing. We'll be competing against the inarticulate kin of unforgettable, unforgettable Tartak. The kobold looks at Jubilus. Huge frog, you speak. Can you? Can me mount you? I free your ants, clean your skin. I am a rider. You like? You like my conversations? They sound very human. I talk like this all the time. <laughs> so, what do you want to ask the host if you win? I dragon. How become dragon? Uh. It's like a spell was cast over my friend when he read the rules. Did anything like that happen to you? 
I don't read. Gnome, help me. Read for me. Aloud. But then scream. I scared. All right, I'm going to get out of here. See you. Gnome read for me, huh? The pale gnome reads enthusiastically. And the young wizard desperately thrashed in his fetters, but all in vain. The shoots of the plant held him tightly. The nymph, cruel and beautiful, sneered at him. And immediately... Immediately what? And immediately anything. The left frog mocking the right one. Does this book ever end? I thought the wizard would die in the last chapter while he was running from the horde of unicorns through fields of giant flytraps. Oh, like you understand anything about literature, you stupid tome. Oh, hello again, travelers. It seems I haven't introduced myself. I'm Neard Zottenwapel. And these two idiots are my brothers, Vire and Luar. Why are you calling those frogs your brothers? <laughs> these fools read the rules and the rules are charmed. Anyone who reads them turns into a frog, so now I have two frog brothers. I guess I'll leave them as they are. Uh, when else will I ever have a chance to laugh so much? Why are they both frogs? Did they read them together? Yes! Nah, the frog to the right says happily, Shut up, Luar. Of course we did. We read them and we transformed and now we're sitting croaking. The little kobold said one of you helped him read the rules. Yeah, that's true, but he wasn't trying to read the frog rules. They're different on every poll. Uh, one turns you into a frog, another makes you say tentacles, and the third one makes you scream like crazy. Hilarious, right? Not remotely. You are confused, my friends. If one of you read the rules to the kobold, why isn't one of you screaming? How was it that both of your brothers were turned into frogs? And if Neard already saw what happened and knew the rules were charmed, then why did she tell us to read them? Do you suspect us of something? Why would we charm the rules and read them ourselves, or make you read them and put a spell on you? Because you're gnomes! Only a gnome could think of playing a joke on everyone around, and then joyfully get caught in their own prank. You far-sighted and loud-voiced, I like you. Answer clearly, did you charm the rules? Why are you picking on us? Our sister is the one who did it. Ha <laughs> ha! Got you, bitch! Oh. <laughs> I just walked into that. Ha <laughs> ha! Got you, bitch! Yeah. Enough snitching, Luar. You are just jealous that it was Neard that came up with the idea. And why did you do it? You're so boring. We wanted to, so we just did. Just think of how funny it will be. Debates where all the participants are screaming or talking about tentacles or croaking. But we're honest players, so we charmed ourselves too. We wouldn't want an unfair advantage. Huh. Release Jubilist from the spell, please. Croak. Croak, croak. We're stupid frogs. We understand nothing. She pretends not to hear me. Thorgrim, I know this is unexpected, but let's just leave it be. I'm ready to participate in the debates, even like this. Alright, let everything stay like it is. Jubilus sighs with relief. Ah, oh, there you are. Glad I found you. I stalled for as long as I could, but now it's time to begin. Let's go. Okay. The hooded creature looks mundane, but after looking for a time, one might notice the figure's contours tremble and flow as in a haze. Welcome to the Inconsequent Debates. You can call us the host. We are the reason for all that happens here today. You have read the rules, have you not? Not that there is anything useful in them. We only made up the real rules the day after tomorrow and then forgot them and had to make new ones. So it's simple. You want as your reward for us to answer a question... So the competition will involve answering questions. We ask, and one in each triplet answers, and always the same one. The others can only prompt. Let's see, it will be you, little kobold. You, Sir Alfrey, you, Neard, and you, Thorgrim. Of course he picks me and not Jubilist. The competition will involve answering questions. We ask... And one in each triplet answers, and always the same one. The others can only prompt. Remember one thing. Here at the Inconsequent Debates, there are no right or wrong answers. Every answer has weight, and each one will be weighed. Don't choose the lightest one, or your rival might find a heavier argument. And most importantly, light answers are no fun for us.
Why are you referring to yourself in the plural? You hear laughter. You know very well you've met us, Thorgrim. But it was a different time. It was, diff it was a different us at a different time. For now, be satisfied that we do not wish to disclose ourselves. Why do the creatures from the first world need to organize this? Win the competition and ask. Those are the rules of the game. Hell no, we're not wasting a precious question to discover the motives of the Fae and their lords. I don't have an imagine I don't have the imagination to think how absurd and silly their answer might be. Begins. We are ready, despite the tentacles. Alright, let's see how tough they have it in the first world. Some of you look so serious, thus we'll begin with a question about weighty matters. What can move a mountain? I'll ask Jubilus and Lindsay. I shouldn't have skipped my philosophy lessons in the academy. Such problems baffle me. It's not because I can't think of an answer, but because I think of a thousand of them at once and I don't know where I can hide from them. We're dealing with the Fey, and in the first world they told us clearly that trivial answers won't cut it. I think the good answer is its own will. In the first world, mountains often change position. And there's at least one that does this of its own free will, the Ulas, one of the Tain, the walking mountain. Say its own will. The Cobalt says, maybe dragon? Dragon can move mountain! Faith and divine intervention. Do you hear my faithful tentacles? Faith nourishes us with devout faith in our tentacles, and the righteous cause everything else is within our tentacles. Teleportation spell. I could probably manage moving a hill or two, in fact. That gives me an idea. We've heard you, now hear us. Of course, gods and magic can move mountains, but that answer is good for any question. How can one jump over a house? Magic. How can you paint a fence yellow using blue paint? Divine intervention. Such light answers are the weakest. A good answer is its own will. Will and desire lie at the base of all motions, actions, and decisions. If a mountain has a will, it will surely find a way to move. What an interesting round. Let the next question be heard. What weakens when owned by many and dies if owned by none? Probably a secret. I'm going to say a secret. The little kobold looks as he's about to cry. I don't know this. Maybe it's dragon? The knight. It's the knight's heart. I swear by my tentacles. It can belong to himself and his righteous cause. Or to the greatest tentacles. It can't belong to everyone. Byar, look how I roll my eyes. <laughs> Fools, concentrate on the competition. This won't do. We won't accept the answer from Zottenthropel's triplet this round. But you are a spectacular eye roller. Now for the other answers. The heart is not the best answer, even among knights. There are many whose hearts belong to beautiful women and a beloved mother. Plus their friends, their commander, and their righteous cause, and a delicious lunch. Especially a del delicious lunch. And it doesn't seem that those hearts that belong to many grow any weaker. This, a secret is a good answer. The morsels know what the less mysterious is, but without a single bearer, it will die. Your triplet wins this round, Baron. Here's the third question. Each of us is born at the same time with a monster. Each day we live, it grows. It can torment us or kill us with a single word. What is it? An evil brother from another timeline. Wisdom check passed. It's our past. We have heard you. What will the others say? What is the monster? The kobold said, It is dragon! Curiosity. It's born with us. It grows day by day. It saves us from the bleaching. And if you only knew how many it's killed. I don't know the, if this answer will do, but the greatest tentacles is the one that lives inside us. We grow a tentacled beast in our soul. We freed it with our wrath, neglect, and tentacles. Eventually it could break free and kill us, but tentacles must admit the same beast gives strength to villains and tentacles. The poison we feed our monsters only nurses them. Interesting answers, except for the dragon. The dragon doesn't count. Alas, curiosity is insufficient. The monsters we described must grow by its own nature, and many see curiosity dim over the years. The answer is the inner beast 
about the inner beast is not bad, but another one surpasses it greatly. The past is the monster we are inseparable with in our life, and often in death as well. Each, li each lived moment makes it grow. Uh, it contains everything, our aspirations, our ambitions, our knowledge, our success, and our failure. It can be the rock that weighs us down or the wings on which we soar. But forgive this example of bad poetry. We declare you, Baron, and your triplet the winners for this round. One final round, and we will sum up the results. I grow tired of the questions. Do you know the game Knight Dragon Snag? The knight defeats the dragon. The dragon burns the snag. But if the knight walks in the woods, he will stumble on the snag and die. That's why the snag defeats the knight. Children's games. Great. <laughs> These are the inconsequent debates. Why not play a game? So you break up into pairs and yell out your chosen word at the signal. The one who shouts knight defeats the one who shouts dragon. And the one who shouts dragon defeats the one who shouts snag. And snag defeats knight. Okay, hold on. <laughs> God damn it. All right. So, knight defeats dragon, dragon defeats snag, and snag defeats knight. Okay, we're playing rock, paper, scissors. We'll play Sir Alfrey against the kobold. And neared against the Baron. That that should have been a question on the survey, rock, paper, or scissors. That would have been smart too. Alfrey says knight, and he says dragon. Of course, easy. That was all too predictable, but charming in a way. It's a good thing we didn't look or look ahead. It's much more fun to see that it unfold like this. Sir Alfrey wins. Now for the second pair. Are you ready? I'm going to say dragon. Dragon, he shouts performing a spot-on impersonation of the kobold, then falls over laughing, looking at their own amusement as if it's more important than the competition. All right, let's go again. One, two. Snag! Oh, it's another tie. The Baron is like my brother. We think exactly the same. Ah, I said dragon. Snag! Ah, damn it. I meant to cheat, but I didn't have time to think of how. Dragon won! One, one! So the Baron wins. Now the winner against winner. The Baron against the Knight. One, two, three. Dragon defeats Knight. <laughs> Sir Alfred takes in a deep breath and with his mighty chest he... <laughs> but then the curse takes over. Tentacles! Realizing that their spell has worked, Neared and her brother start roaring with laughter. The host makes a helpless gesture. Uh, we cannot but pronounce the Baron a winner in this round. And now it is time to announce the winner of the debates. After four tests, the triplet of the Baron and Sir Jubilus win. It was most amusing, children. Most amusing. You should know that this is a rare praise from us. Congratulations, sir and ladies. I swear by my tentacles it was a worthy struggle. Your triplet performed better than we could have imagined. For that reason, you may ask us not one and not two, but three questions, and they must be asked by the Baron, the voice of your triplet. I have a silent spell, mate. Ha <laughs> ha, I love it. Now what's he going to do? Come, brothers, let's run. Now everything is in your hands, Thorgrim. Think well upon your questions. We will answer honestly, but I don't know is also an honest answer. Ask about what a host from the first world might know. All 
I want to know why the gnomes left the first world. There is a question. We knew it would be asked, but a simple answer, a light answer, has no value, right? We hope our debates convinced you of this. That is why we present you with another answer, a good one, a valuable one. Oh my lord. Numbers will help you on your way. One of them is 5th in 10. It will be easy to find if you read who opened the road for the ancient dead man and his black feathered messenger. The second is a dozen times a dozen. And do I need to write this down? Or is it is it going to be written down for me? Like this is crazy. The second is a dozen times in a dozen and the thr and is thrice the number of those who lost their faces. Don't try to guess it now. It's not time yet. Wait until he who is born twice will twice be defeated. Put the two numbers together. When the moon leaves her path near the waters of Candlemere, find the one who will open the secret. What the fuck? All right. 